time. One of the things I was thinking about with the iPhone, uh, and I'm, I'm thinking about it quite often as to whether or not I want to use it in conjunction with other devices or it should be the only device I have. In particular, I was thinking about getting a netbook. And, you know, as blind folks, we think about the kinds of things we do on a daily basis. And we kind of, you know, if we like to hear talking books, we will have a, a stream or a book sense or a book port plus. So we know right now, although NLS is working on a, an application that will hopefully for iPhones and Androids allow us to play NLS books for those folks in the US at least, or who are US citizens. For right now, it's the blindness specific devices that'll play those books. But we also know that netbooks can do lots of other things like email, browse the web, uh, run any Windows or Mac programs depending on the kind of netbook you get. But the issue is with the iPhone can also do a lot of those same kinds of tasks. So I was asking myself in kind of a serious way, should I get a netbook or is the iPhone sufficient for me as a blind user to do what I want to do and allow me to get the tasks done that I need to get done. So very briefly, I mean, I, I can do email with the iPhone, uh, so I don't need a netbook for that. Yeah, I do, I, I, I do email as well with mine. Right. So I do, you can browse with the iPhone on the web. The main problem, and those people who know me are sick of hearing me whine about this problem continuously, but the problem with the Mac products so far, and that goes for Safari, on the Mac or on the iDevices is that if you have tables that have headers that are not labeled properly, you can't tell uh, the browser and screen reader combination, read these as table headers and make the column associations with the cell data as you can with screen readers under Windows. But once they get that fixed, I will happily browse with the iPhone and also not need a netbook for that as well. I do a lot of browsing of sites where there are these tables. I have a significant need for table browsing and many people don't, but because I do, I'm still kind of stuck with a Windows based screen reader for that. Uh, but the other thing I, I would use a netbook for a lot is taking notes in meetings. And I have found that the iPhone for my purposes is really just as good as a netbook for taking notes. And one of the things I wanted to demonstrate today quickly was using a Bluetooth keyboard in the notes application to take notes and edit text and delete text uh, in the, really the same way that one would do so with a PC or Mac based uh, netbook or computer. And the iPhone application for, for editing is actually quite sophisticated. Um, I'm using an Apple wireless Bluetooth keyboard and I'm, I'm moving around the screen and I'm going to look for the application called notes. Now, the way I'm doing this is I'm just holding down what are called the VO keys, which are command and option. Where is it? Control. Option and control. Uh, control, right. and option. control and option. And um, holding those down and pressing the left and right arrow keys which give you the same functionality as if you were holding the iPhone in your hand and flicking left and right. So you can either use gestures on the touch screen itself, or you can use a Bluetooth keyboard, which is what I'm doing, or of course, uh, a keyboard that attaches with a USB port as well. So let's find the notes application. Hey, pal, no, double pass open. Yeah. Yes. yes it does. Yep. Yeah. The, question. The, the question was, does the Bluetooth keyboard work the same on other eye devices uh, other than the iPhone? And the answer is yes. Yeah. Did you have something to say, Mark? No, I was going to say, I just, I use my iPad to take notes with a, with a Bluetooth keyboard. Great. I've got, yeah. So now you can take notes, of course, small notes, if you're actually using the touch screen and using either the touch typing or the double tap method of actually finding letters on the screen and entering data that way. But that's pretty slow. I wouldn't want to do that during a meeting. 
uh, there may be some real diehard blind iPhone aficionados who might disagree with me, but I'm, you know, we all do what we're comfortable with and we all do what meets our specific needs. So it's nice not to have a one size fits all and to be able to have choices. So I'm going to find, I'm, I'm on the notes app here. Hey, no. And I'm, I'm going to double tap it. And again, instead of double tapping on the touch screen uh, with a finger, I'm holding down the VO uh, keys, option and control, and I'm hitting the space bar on the keyboard, which simulates the double tap. No, no, one, heading. Okay, so uh, I'm now in the application. And again, I'm going to move around this application from element to element using the VO keys and the right arrow. And when I say the VO keys, the VO keys, voiceover keys, meaning holding down option and control. So I'm going back to the button that says add, ADD, which means I can add a note, and I'm going to double tap that. No, it's supposed to, and it's supposed to. I'm wondering if my your, your sound may be off. Yeah, my sound may be muted here. Can you turn up your volume a tad bit more on your speakers? Sure. Yeah, I can hear them. Can you guys hear them back there? Yeah. All right. I just want to again just turn up this volume a little bit here. There we go. Okay, so I'm hitting the VO keys left arrow, and I'm hearing that clunk, meaning I'm at the very beginning element in this particular screen full of elements in the notes program. So now I'm going to move to the right with the VO keys and the right arrow. New note heading. And it says new note heading, which tells me I'm on a new note, which is where I want to be. Button. And I'm on the done button, which when I'm finished the note, I can save it by double tapping the done button, closing the application, and saving the note. Okay, July 15, 1.30 p.m. Great. So it's giving me the date of the note, which is great. It'll keep that in the note, so it'll always tell me when it was created. No, text field, presenting, character mode. Okay. I'm now in an editing field, and it said, character mode is editing. And here's where something really wonderful that Apple did among the many things they do. Um, this keyboard has two modes. And this is something that took me a while to really get down and understand because I'm not the fastest tool in the box. But when I get it, I get it. And this is really cool. When you normally use the Bluetooth keyboard, Quick navigation is on. And what quick navigation means is that you're moving from element to element in the keyboard uh, as you move with the left and right arrow keys or the VO plus the left and right arrow keys. Now, there's another mode that says quick nav off. Uh, and it's not just the absence of quick navigation. What it really means, and I do wish Apple had named this editing mode, because rather than being the absence of quick navigation, it really enters into a mode that actually allows you to enter characters, move among them, mm -hmm. and select them, and do the very same things you would do on the keyboard that you would do with a Windows device or a Mac you know, using word processing software. So I'm going to hit on the keyboard the left and right arrows together to see uh, and change the current state of quick navigation. Nav off. Okay, now quick nav is off. I'm in the edit box and I can begin to type. I'll just do a couple, a sentence or two. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next line. Now, I'm going to start just hitting the up arrow. 
Okay, it starts. I'm at the top of the screen now because I'm hitting the up arrow and I'm hearing that noise. And I'm moving to the right. It's a little slow. I'm just using the arrow key. And remember, the key to this, I'm going to turn quick nav on for a second. Okay. So, so now, okay. Now with quick navigation on, I'm going to start hitting the arrow keys again because I really want to highlight the difference of what happens when quick nav is off and quick nav is on. So I'm going to hit my left arrow. Okay. July 16, 1.35 p.m. And I'm going to hit my right arrow. No, come on. Miami is on and I am black over here with all of you today. Text field. Who's editing? Parents are both. Now, what's happening is I'm not able to move within the edit field. I'm only able to move among the elements, the major elements on the screen, which include this edit box, information from the software, etc. But if I want to be able to edit and actually move around the screen, I have to turn quick nav off and go into the editing mode. And once people grasp that, that there's two major modes, and when you want to edit, you turn off quick navigation and you go into editing, then this whole thing, this whole scenario becomes a lot easier to use, and you find that you can really do the kind of editing that will be useful to you in keeping notes and actually writing things down that you want, be they lists or whatever else. So I'm going to go back into the editing mode with quick nav off. Quick nav off. New line. Capital M. Now, um, I heard some mistakes here. So I'm going to hold down the option key and I'm going to hit the right arrow, which will allow me to move from word to word. I'm going to hit left arrow. Capital M. So it's similar to hitting, it's similar to holding on to control, left or right arrow. It's right, similar to hitting, holding down control and hitting left and right arrow in Windows. And I'm not sure what the, the Mac version is, but you, you can move by word, letter, uh, and, and it's it's pretty cool. So we're going to move to the right now. I'm going to see what mistakes I made. Come on. Nine. Any. Missed out. Even voiceover is telling me it's misspelled. How yeah. embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'm going to take my hand off the option key, and I'm going to move around letter by letter to see what I did wrong here with the word name, because I wanted to t say my name is Don. And I will admit, I did not deliberately make this mistake. I'm just not the uh, fastest or best typist here. But that's OK, because we all make mistakes when we type, and it's helpful to know how to correct them. So let's go to the left here. Okay, I just moved right. I'm on the word my, and I'm going to move to the right and get to that misspelled word name. So it looks like, it looks like I left the... Um, there's an A at the beginning, and that shouldn't be there. A. So a. I'm moving to the right of the A, and I'm going to hit the backspace key. A. Okay, so now let's go to the, I'm going to go back to the left. A. Now let's move to the right, and let me look at the rest of this word. I must have gone to the next line. Let me just let me see where I am here. Well, I may have made more mistakes than I'm aware of here. Okay. Not in this particular program. 
Yeah, somebody asked, uh, Glenn asked if it has a built-in spell checker. Yeah, no, it doesn't. And it does not. 